accounts. What did I ask you earlier? I'm like, because I just had a random question. I'm like, dude, do you keep your notifications on on every channel? What did you tell me? I, I have about 175 that I get notifications. Damn! So you don't gamble, correct? I do not gamble. I, I do not partake in the game of chance. Okay. If I were to play, it, were, it would be 21. Okay. Um, poker, there's too much thought involved. Yes. And yeah. slots, there's no thought. I, want <laughs> I started to notice that the chat room was like their own little community. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. it got to the point where the chat room would bounce from live stream to Do live stream. stream. <laughs> and they honestly, at times, did not care who was live streaming. <laughs> <laughs> they just wanted a place to talk to each other. Yes. And they would also talk to the live streamer yeah. and they liked the live streamer. But they honestly could care less who was live. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest part is, so when we switch to a new stream, it's like, hey, hey Vegas visual. Hey Vegas to Cali. It's like we haven't seen each other all day, but we just got out of one stream and we're all starting all over again. Like, <laughs> you know what I love about Bridger is everything's raw with him. Everything's real. Well, with he's him. real yeah. and he just does his own thing. Yeah. He doesn't care about the latest vlogger fad. Uh, yeah. fad. Um, and that's I think a lot of people like him because he is genuine. Yes. I mean, he has a British accent and he's right. got that going. So that's. That's a that's a little icing on the cake. Yeah, yeah. But it's really being genuine and being himself, and the you, you can feel and hear the love of Vegas through him. Oh, well, I was just gonna say you want to hear and feel something. How about when he hit the hand pail? <laughs> it's a fucking hand pail. <laughs> Are you serious? Alrighty guys, well welcome back to the Vegas Confessions Podcast. I'm your host Jay and today I'm excited. I got another special guest sitting down next to me is good friend from YouTube who I discovered recently. I freaking love this channel. And we just chatted right now for like 30 minutes walking around the <laughs> casino. I know we're gonna have a great chat. Guys, I wanna introduce you to one of my favorite YouTube channels. History Buff knows so much about Vegas. I love chatting with this guy and picking this guy's brain. Vegas visual on YouTube. Thank you. Thank How you are very you? much. Dude, it's, it, it's, it's seriously, I, the, the latest video we just finished talking about, like, I love it. The information, the retractable TV still just sticks out to me. That's the thing that blew my mind, the retractable TV. It's just the funny little things, right? The little details. Yeah. 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 So let's, let's, I want to know more about you, how you got involved with Vegas, why you started coming to Vegas and you know, what really hooked you about it? So I, I started coming to Vegas in the early 80s. I don't even know the year because I was too young. I was <laughs> 11 or 12. And the only thing I remember about Vegas is the lights. Yeah. It wasn't about the architecture of the buildings. Yeah. It was about lights, 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 um, and just driving down the, the strip back then. Yeah. Um, and then I would come off and on. I, I live, I've lived in California most of my life, uh, Bay Area, LA, and San Diego. Okay. Um, but I was only coming every every five to ten years. I, I wasn't a regular Vegas visitor, okay. but I liked learning about Vegas, and I, I like learning about people, places, and things. I just like to know their backstory, where they came to be, learning about different personalities and life stories, yeah. you know. And so I love that stuff. And so, in 2014 ish, roughly maybe 2015, I started watching Jacob and Trooper, and. Um, What's the third one I'm trying to What's think? Up? I was watching those though, and because uh, I just wanted, to, I wanted to do exactly what Jacob was doing, which is learn about Vegas. And there was mm -hmm. no one out there doing Vegas. Jacob was totally right. There was no one, no bloggers back then. Yeah, he was the only one. And so I got into it, and then I, you know, I watched year after year those three, and I started watching more. And then of course, like a lot of people's story, the shutdown happens, and you have more time. And so I got more into the vloggers and the live streams and then went from there. 
And how did you get so hooked onto the vloggers? Because, guys, this guy covers all the vloggers' channels. What did I ask you earlier? I'm like, because I just had a random question. I'm like, dude, do you keep your notifications on on every channel? What did you tell me? I, I have about 175 that I get notifications. So it's I'm constantly throughout the day opening the phone, try, trying to triage my notifications. Because I don't watch every vlog. I don't yeah. watch the food reviews and the... So I have to triage them. So by the end of the day, when I actually sit down and start watching them, I don't have 35 notifications to go through. Yeah. Um, so. And you do a hell of a job covering them because there's so many out there. And that's one thing that's neat about your channel is, I, I just finished telling you, I'm always discovering somebody new. Oh yeah. Every I single mean, time, yeah. It's, it's just a potpourri of personalities and people that love Vegas and they each have their own perspective. Yeah. I mean. What does your favorite Vegas trip look like? My favorite Vegas trip looks like half doing stuff, half not doing stuff. <laughs> what I like to do, I really like to take Vegas slowly. Yeah. And not have everything planned out mm -hmm. or a checklist. Okay. So there's nothing specific yeah. about I need to go here or there, or I want to do the pool, or I want to okay. do the restaurant. It's just taking Vegas slowly, 50%. Schedule fifty percent not. Okay. Favorite places to stay? Favorite places to stay. I mean, I'm I'm staying at Ellis because I like the location, the prices. Um, I haven't been to the Mirage, but I want to try out the Mirage. That is is such a classic yeah. resort. And and again, like I told you earlier, I don't like the massive <laughs> sprawling <laughs> hotel resorts that it takes you fifteen twenty to get across the complex. I just right. and they're they're more impersonal and more corporate. So I tend not to like those as much. Okay. And what are some of your favorite restaurants to visit in Las Vegas when you're out here? I like the local ones. Honestly, I haven't done a lot. I, I haven't done a lot lately to name off ones. Uh, but I tried Jesse Ray's Barbecue the other day. Good stuff. Um, so I, I try to go to local places. Mm -hmm. um, I try to stay away from the Mexican food because I get... I get really good quality Mexican in, in San Diego, so okay. I almost never eat, eat Mexican in Vegas. Okay. We have some of the exact same restaurants like Roberto's. Yeah. It was based, it started in San Diego, and then the other one uh, is based in Tijuana, but they, they also have ones in San Diego, so I try to avoid those. Okay. Uh, I still want to try poutine, though. I haven't tried poutine. That's so that's funny. A, that's a Canadian I've never meal. tried it either. <laughs> I've never tried and it so, either. And Penny's always talks about it. Yeah, and so I got to get Penny's or Matthew or T&G to tell me which one is the real deal. And once I find out the closest one that's the real deal in Vegas, then I'll, I'll try it out. I'm trying to but, remember who Matthew said. Matthew said somebody does a killer poutine in Vegas. So I need to find I have to ask Once you. I get the name from one of those three, yeah. then I'll go with that. Uh, yeah, I might go with restaurant. you. Yeah, because yeah. it's, it's a very interesting thing. I always hear people talking about it ranting and raving about it. I've never tried it. So yeah, yeah it, it, it does look good. And the one thing I'm happy that the buffets are back. I mean, cause that, um, you can't get more classic Vegas than the buffets. I yeah. mean, that is just like, people expect that. Yeah. So I'm glad that some resorts are either taking a loss leader on it or just bringing it back as a service. Cause some of them don't make a lot of money on that. It's more of a service to their, yeah. to their customers. Right. So, what are some of your favorite things that you've learned since YouTubing? I know you said you have a YouTube channel beforehand, but what has been some of the you know rewards of YouTubing that you've? Well, the rewards is meeting people and learning yeah, about yeah, people. Hundred percent. And what I like most about YouTube is it's a platform where people are themselves. Yeah. And it's a one man band. It's it's one person doing their thing. There are no corporate overlords that say you have to do this or that. Right. You can present things the way you want to present it. It's just real people producing real content for other real people. And I just love that. It's it's not reality TV, because reality TV isn't real. Right. It's That's all scripted and all that. Right. This is true reality TV, especially the daily vloggers. Yeah. I love the daily vloggers, because they're just doing their thing, going along their way, and, and, the, and the camera's coming for a ride. My favorites are the one who have the daily vlogs of information, news and stuff like that. A little, it's, yeah, yeah. It's always like, what? I didn't know this was happening. And yeah, it's always something new, yeah. Yeah, so they'll, they'll throw in a little bit of tidbit information here and there, little little kernels of information, I really like that. Yeah. And then I, I love Joe with Straight Out of Vegas, 
because he will do a he will do a vlog that's a classic daily vlog but he'll throw in his really fine cinematography yeah. so it's not quite a daily vlog you get a little bit of cinematography yeah. a little bit of daily vlog and yeah. i like that too he's one that stands out to me because he you watch his stuff and he just makes you want to do better like when my favorite clip of his, he was walking under Frema under the canopy and he had his camera and he's just kind of going all over the place. And it's like, you're watching this video and you're flying through Frema <laughs> under the canopy. You're like, what the hell is going on? Like, yeah, what? Yeah. So when I first met him, I was like, Joe, I thought that was so cool. He's like, thanks, man. It's just the little things that stick out. But that yeah. guy in particular, Mark as well, the videos, the detail are just something else, a whole nother level. Yeah. I, and, I really enjoy watching him. And I... I try not to do this too much, and I hate to talk specifically about particular vloggers because for for me, each one of them brings something different to the table, right. and I like every one of them. I mean, so I, I hate I always hate to specifically name out people and say, yeah, I, I love yeah. them, because then then there's other people out there saying, well, he doesn't love my channel. Well, and it makes much. it harder though, right? When you come out and you meet them, and then they're exactly the person you've been watching for so long, and you yeah. already know them, and you guys hit it off like. That's one thing that never gets old. That's the reward. So, yeah, I totally get what you're saying. It's one of the coolest things about doing all of this. And I've seen it from the podcast standpoint, which has been a little weirder because <laughs> people listen and know who you are. But there's no visual. And right. and when they hear you or some, something in the casino, <laughs> they're like, Jay? I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? How do you know who I am? Like, yeah, but it's Just, it's really neat because a lot of the times... They'll follow on Twitter, and then when I'm out there recording or something, they'll be like, hey, how you doing? I follow you, dude. I'm like, really? Thanks. Like, you'd never know who's watching, which I find also to be one of the most fascinating parts because you just get people who reach out and watch from all over the place. And Vegas is, it just proves that Vegas is the most interesting place in the world. And I think it was Movestro, or, mm -hmm. or someone said that, I forgot who it was, but I think it's Movestro, that... You don't really choose your family, but you choose your your friends with the Vegas vloggers because you'll have something in common. You have Vegas in common, yeah, and and your friends be, because you you really like Vegas, mm -hmm. and your friends and family may not understand that so much. What's what? Well, the other aspect is is like we all get together. Well, when when we're all together, and somebody says, you know, what are we doing? Usually, everybody's like whatever what are we doing let's do something so it, it's it goes right back to that hey we all have something in common which is vegas it doesn't matter what we're gonna do let's just go do it together which is also one of the highlights of you know the group meetups and people having you know slot slot pools and stuff like that because you get to get together and meet these people a lot of the times and a lot of the times doing the podcast i never had that opportunity so even going into it i feel like every day i'm new because i'm always discovering somebody new and I'm like, damn, I feel bad. I should have, you know, been watching. And they got 5,000 subscribers. And I'm like, how have I not heard of this person, you know? Yeah. But it really is hard because there's so many different people that bring their own angle to the game. And, you know, some people have really good content. So it does, it makes you want to push to be better. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, just the variety of the people and what they're doing. Almost... There is almost no duplicate Vegas vlogger. They either have a different personality or a background or different content. Yeah. I I would have to go through the list to actually know if that was a true statement, but I would venture to say it's a true statement. Because, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I want to talk about the other night, which was great because I saw you on Dingo's live stream. <laughs> <laughs> and so I hadn't planned to watch Dingo's live stream, okay? So Bob Dingo is an Australian YouTuber who happens to vlog a lot in Vegas. And I've discovered him recently, and I mean, I love the accent. I just love watching him and hearing him talk, right? So <laughs> when he's in Vegas and him and his mom are out exploring and stuff, it's great. But what happened the other night was probably one of the best things. And his reaction and response to everything was even better. So you guys are walking on the strip. You guys are heading in the wind? We were heading uh, northbound and we were going to the wind, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, you, you tell it. You tell so, it. me and Tom were actually starting to walk ahead and he was doing his thing. It was one of the few times where we weren't really right next to Dingo at the time. And right when I was talking to Tom, all of a sudden we, we hear this lady talking to Dingo. And I, I just turned around and it basically happened right as I turned around. 
and the lady just grabbed the crotch of Dingo. And it took, the whole interaction took, I actually counted it up because I looked back at the live stream, because so I'm going to report on it on Monday, but it was about a 25 second interaction from when she pulled up to Dingo and just went for the, went for, went for the jewels. What's funny is they started off when she was like, he's gang banging and he's like, yeah. you're gang banging? He's like, she's all, no, you're gang banging. She's all, nope, I'm grabbing down below. And it was, yeah, the, the, the verbal interaction between the two was pretty normal, I mean, except for the actual verbiage. <laughs> but it, it was, it, it, it's from, when I was looking back at the, at, at the video uh, is when I actually saw the whole interaction. But, and then all of a sudden she just goes out of nowhere and, and reaches for the, from the, the whole kit and caboodle. So his um, response was the best though. <laughs> He's like, Whoa! Do you remember what he said? I, I don't remember actually. She the grabbed my didgeridoo. <laughs> she played with my didgeridoo. Flashback. I work a lot of Friday so gonna put, there's a live stream. So we're, uh, no, we're streaming live to YouTube. And uh, he got hooked up. That's us. A gang banger. And a gang banger. 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 He's like, hey, you know, this is the only place in the world that, you know, it can, it can happen, happen and I'll yeah. be okay with it. I, like, I expect it here. Like, I wouldn't expect it at home, you know, it's, with, it's, with my neighbor. It's kind of a dingo thing, too. But, yes. I mean, uh, honestly, if it happened to some other vloggers, I'm not sure what the reaction would be. I, I mean, it was perfect for dingo to have that. It really was. <laughs> and what was funny is like an hour later before I left and went to work on a video, I was like, hey, dingo, be safe, use protection. And protect the crotch he's like oh yeah protect i forgot that even happened thanks yeah. <laughs> like how'd you forget that happened he kind of, he's had some crazy live streams i mean he about a, i don't know it was a couple of months ago he, he he got a whole swig of of uh, vodka or something out right on the strip because he wanted to get, get a drink and so there's there's these guys drinking and they had this big bottle and he just he didn't down all of it he, but he, he had a big swig for free he just and it was a, some quality stuff i forgot what it was but it's some expensive alcohol. Oh wow! And he just downed it right, right there. It's just a big, huge bottle. It's like <laughs> he, he just gets into some interesting situations. I mean, and I, and I love him and his mom together. Him and his mom, their videos are just so perfect. You know, they one talks, the other one talks, and you know they try things together, and they don't always like some stuff the same. And it, it's really neat. I really enjoyed his channel. But when I watched that live stream the other night and I saw you with him. I was like, oh, that's cool. Vegas visuals with them. And then Tom E joined in and then the incident happened. And I'm like, oh, I've never seen that <laughs> it's, ever. Happen. I mean, it's definitely, it's it's one of the weirdest things I've seen on, on a live stream for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's just, and I saw, I didn't see the whole, so I didn't, didn't see the first part. I turned around and all of a sudden it was, you know, it just happened, it happened so quickly. Yeah. It was like, yeah. you didn't expect it. Too funny. Yeah. So how did you get, involved with YouTube. You you said you had a channel so, before? Yeah, I started a channel in 2012. Mm -hmm. It's sports based because I'm a sports photojournalist. Right. So when I'd shoot games, highlights, even post game interviews, sometimes I'd, I'd throw it up on the on the channel. Okay. Um, so it's primarily San Diego, but you know, teams from out of town come in obviously, obviously so there's players from all over the country. Uh, but and so I've had that since 2012 and a, a lot, lot of views and all that. But I, I just kind of got overdone with sports in general. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to start a, a different channel and I'm in San Diego. So I start, I was gonna start Vacation Visual was the name. Okay. And it, I thought I was just gonna do some basic shots of San Diego, different shots that people would wanna see, you know, okay. the beaches, the bays, the mountains, the, the, the Hotel Del Coronado and all that. So I, I, I shot like three videos, but I didn't like the concept, how it turned out. So after three videos, I didn't really go public with it. Uh, I think the channel was always private for that matter. I don't think it ever went public. Oh, okay. If I remember right. Um, it it, it might have gone public for a few days or a few weeks or something. And so that was 2019. Yeah. And so I but I just let it go and I didn't close down the channel. And then I, I started watching Vegas vloggers more and more. Then the shutdown happened 
And then around the fall of the breakdown, so that was almost a year ago from now. Okay. Uh, 2021 or 2020 20. fall in October, roughly, I started to notice that the chat room was like their own little community. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. it got to the point where the chat room would bounce from live stream to live, live stream. stream. <laughs> and they honestly, at times, did not care who was live streaming. <laughs> <laughs> they just wanted a place to talk to each other yes. and they would also talk to the live streamer and they liked the live streamer but they honestly could care less who was live <laughs> I mean that's really how it went you could have phrased that better it's 100% what we do <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's really I, and I'm not, I'm not trying to disparage the live streamer because they're all great and, and the, the chat also loved whoever was live streaming no, I'm yeah, not, right. but I'm just saying that you know, you'd have a two or three hour period where streamers would come on and off. Right. Because at, at that time, you're only streaming for an hour or two. And then everyone would go to the next stream and kind of continue the conversation. Yeah. And um, and so I, I just felt that there was a community being built uh, primarily around the pandemic because people had more time mm -hmm. and the, the community of Loving Vegas. And so I, I said there needed to be one place where people can discover new vlogs, new vloggers and just know what's going on. And there's a lot of misinformation out there and rumors and the, and the chat was always flying with who's doing what and mm -hmm. what's happening. And I, I don't get into the, I don't get into rumors or the, or the, the drama and I stay away from that. But that when there's basic things like if, if Jay's going to start a, a new portion of the channel doing something different then I'll mention that, Hey, Jay's going to start doing food reviews or yeah. Jay's going to start doing this. It's the news items of the vlogger that I, that I, follow and, and talk about on the Monday show. Um, and then if, you know, I, I, I don't get into negative stuff, but if someone, like if, if if someone were to be arrested of something and it was public knowledge, oh yeah, I would probably mention it, but not, it would have to be public knowledge and out there and it had to be important. But even then, I, I, I may not even talk about it, it just yeah. depends. But but the drama in general and, and the gossiping stuff, I don't really get into. I'm not, I'm not gonna be the, the TMZ of, yeah. of Vegas vloggers, <laughs> Vegas even vlogs. though I think there's someone that calls me that. I'm not sure if it's Matthew. <laughs> I think it was Matthew that called me the TMZ of vloggers, which I don't mind the news aspect of it, but not the rumors and the, <laughs> that thing. You're only okay with half of it. Yeah, and so, and the other thing that I, I try to make a point with people is anything that I hear or see in mm -hmm. person, I don't report on. No, oh, okay. So the only stuff I, I put on the, on the Monday show, yeah. it has to be put on YouTube and it's mostly just the daily vlogs it can be the live streams yeah. and sometimes the food and restaurant reviews but it has to be on on YouTube because if they put it on YouTube then I'm assuming they okayed it for public knowledge and use and okay. so and it also it also makes it easier I'm tunnel visioned yeah. into only reporting on stuff I see on that screen yeah that's true um, and so I don't I don't deal with the with the stuff I see in person so you come to Vegas pretty often? Lately, but again, um, for my lifetime, it was every five to 10 years. It wasn't a lot. I liked more about learning about things. Yeah. I'm big into history for that reason. Okay. Seeing where things began, how okay. they started. Uh, so that's partly why I know a lot about Vegas, because I've done a lot of reading and research and watching docs and um, and that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, but I've now been to Vegas three times this summer. Uh, two of the times, two of the three visits have now had record heat, so yeah. I definitely picked the wrong weeks. Uh, so it's lately it's been a lot, and long term, I'm probably looking at two or three times a year max yeah. total. Uh, it's just that with the with the weekly show and all that, I I was coming more this summer. Yeah. Um, so okay, that's kind of where I'm at there, and and I just want to do the weekly show and and cover the daily vlogs. That's, mm -hmm kind of what the show is about now. I've cut back. I'm no longer covering the restaurant reviews and the hotel reviews and yeah. the top 10 list. And I'm just covering the daily vloggers. And then I have a new segment. So occasionally, like I'll, I'm, I'm going to talk about Bob Dingo's live stream and what happened there. Yeah. Uh, so that's more of a news item. It's yeah. not, I'm not really talking about the whole live stream. Right. And it's only if I catch it. I, I, I just can't watch all the live streams. There's no way. Right. There's multiple hours a day of live streaming. So. <laughs> So you don't gamble, correct? I do not gamble. I, I do not partake in the game of chance. Okay, 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 <laughs> smart man. And that's that's more probably my personality and, yeah. and just if I were to play, it, were, it would be twenty one. Okay. Um, 
poker, there's too much thought involved. Yes. And yeah. slots, there's no thought. I want that middle. <laughs> I, I want that middle ground where I would have to do a little bit of thinking. There's That's a little great. bit of cerebral action going yeah, on, yeah. but I but I also don't want to be actually working. And poker is like work to yeah, me. Yeah. I mean to really do it right. I, I've said so, uh, poker is really a, like a mind, especially yeah. you know with other people at the table. I'm like, oh no, I can, I just can't do yeah. it. I to do it right, it's it's an actual job. I yeah. mean, if you want to actually make money or even break even necessarily, but and then slots is just pushing a button. <laughs> and I get why people like it, but it's it would, uh, 21 would be my game. Okay, it's okay. a happy middle. Yeah. Okay. So. Have you, you've been to resorts, right? Yeah. Did you go up to the new bar up top? I did not go up there, no. Okay. It was it was when I met T&G, that's when I, that's the one time I, on the, the live stream. Oh, okay, so. so that was right, that was actually right when I left too. So that thing got opened right after I left yeah. that bar. So I hadn't got to check that out either. I definitely want to check that out. Um, Cause I saw you were there a couple of days after with the group, so I didn't know if you guys had made it up there or not. Yeah. So yeah, I wanted to ask that for sure. So. Any plans for the channel? Are you looking forward to, you know, bringing any kind of new aspects into what you're doing already and covering the Vegas vloggers? I mean, I know that it's already a handful in itself, but yeah, do you see you doing anything different in the future? No, I just want to do the, the Monday weekly show yeah. about daily vloggers and mm -hmm. the news of vloggers. And then I'm doing the history. I've got probably at least eight to 10 projects already set up. Nice. Of uh, different hotels and different aspects of Vegas, mostly pre pre nineteen seventy even, uh, but uh, the history of the Strip, history of Fremont, just deep diving, getting original documents, original sourcing because there's, yeah. there's a lot of mythology out there and this happened and that happened. And it's not always true. Yeah. So I'm having to dive deep into the history and finding finding quotes and 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 source of information so I can get to the nitty gritty of what really happened, how it started. So the really the history, the history vlogs is, is the second half of the channel kind of. Yeah. I'm, I'm basically known as, as the guy that does the weekly show and, and, and that's fine. But I'm also, when I can, I'm, I'm doing the history vlogs. Yeah. And they're gonna come out when they're done. I don't have a fixed time of every mm -hmm. two weeks or once a month. Whenever I complete it, it's out. It's out. Yeah. And so it's probably, I'm trying to put them out on Thursday, but again, I might I might just put it out whenever it's done. And um, what's funny is you're doing these history vlogs, and we talked about a different YouTuber earlier about you know he does some casino videos and stuff like that, and we were we were trying to figure it out, and we were talking about him trying to figure out the name, and just because you know we started working together, we figured it out. <laughs> Hilarious, but he's got some really good videos, and when you put up your video, I was like holy shit, this video just blew him out of the water. Like, there was so much detail in that Desert End video that it was just, it, it was a lot. Like, from everything that went into that thing, I was sitting there watching the whole thing like, wow, you, like, you really did your homework in this thing. Like, it took, you can tell that there was a lot of detail, a lot of effort put into that thing. So again, man, I, I found it very fascinating. Again, the small intricate stuff, you know, the, the yeah, retractable it's really, TV. It, it, the, the, yeah, the details are fun. And the other thing I'm doing is that that Desert Inn was 30 minutes long. Mm -hmm. If I actually narrated all the facts on that vlog, it would have been an hour. Yeah. And I want to try to keep it to 30 minutes or less. And so I put a lot of quotes and information on the screen yeah. that I don't narrate. And you actually have to stop and pause the vlog to see it. And I don't do that on purpose to m get better views or anything, but it, it just makes it shorter for the people that don't want all the details. Yeah. But there's details there that you can pause the video and see more if you want. And that's one thing I wanted to touch on is some of the pictures, the old school pictures oh, and wow. stuff that are in there, yeah. the videos, the commercials. I mean, there's some <laughs> cool shit in there. I'm like, it's, wow. Like, it's, yeah, I didn't know. I mean, obviously, it probably did exist, but I didn't. I didn't, had never seen mm -hmm. half that content. Yeah. But half the content that I show, and half the content and information I talk about, I didn't know existed or didn't know the information of it. So I'm I'm exploring right along it with everyone else, okay. and it's it's really pretty amazing all the different he details, uh, and so it's just fun to do basically. What's been your most favorite meal in Las Vegas? Favorite meal? I mean, it might have been Jesse Ray's. I was surprised. Oh, really? it's, it's, okay. it's an actual 
absolute hole in the wall. I mean, I mean, not killer food, for me. but it's killer yeah, food. it's just amazing. Yeah, it is. It is a lot of that dude cooks with a lot of love over there. Yeah, Mike's good and then, people. I gotta give a, a shout out. I didn't go this time, but good pie, good pie pizza. And it comes down to, with food in general, it's it's really just two things. It's ingredients and preparation, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, but ingredients is such an important part of food in general. And yeah. they start with quality food. Some of it's brought in uh, from New York and I think even Italy. I think I, th I think they bring in the, the cheese from Italy. And mm -hmm. so, uh, they they just do it right and and he the owner the new owner they only, only been around since they they opened in the middle of the pandemic last fall mm -hmm. uh, they're in the arts district and um, he used to be the chef at Evil, Evil Pie. Pie right yeah and so he knows the Evil Pie guy really good and the Good Pie is a playoff of Evil Pie mm -hmm. and they're still friends and all that but uh, so he has a great background in Evil Pie and so now the head chef is running Good Pie so it, and both are great places. Uh, but I really like good pie. Okay, so that's the one Mike's hot honey. The yeah, hot the hot honey. So uh, Mike here at Papa Pizza does a hot honey as well. Oh yeah. And okay. most of his ingredients come from uh, back east in New York. Oh wow. Yeah, okay. and he's got some pretty decent pizza. So maybe before we're done or after we're done with this, we go grab a slice and check him out. He's he does some pretty good pizza too. But evil pie or good pie, I've been wanted to check out too because uh, right. Trooper went there not too long ago either or not too long ago and I thought oh man I really got to check that place out yeah it's yeah. a cool little place it has a grandma wall have you heard about the grandma wall hmm. people can people put their, a photo of their grandma up on the wall <laughs> so, Wait, it, what? so it's, it's, <laughs> it's really cool it's just a bunch of grandmas from <laughs> From 50 years ago to 10 years ago to whatever, no just way. little little personal portraits of grandmas. So it's the grandma because they have grandma style pizza, right, right, and all that. And so they have one the, the one long wall with the brick wall has a grandma's That's all over, neat. and it's a neat little concept. And so it's it's pretty cool. Okay, so you're big into the history. Let's talk a little bit of the future. There's been talks in the works of Fountain Blue being worked on. Do you think it actually is successful this round one of the investors or the people involved in the fountain blue stage of that building because of course we've had multiple shots mm -hmm. at trying to build this mm -hmm. thing one of them has come back so they have history of the project and the site mm -hmm. so there's that and then jw marriott is now involved right. so you have a major flag on the hotel so there's that too and i see the only way that that thing does not get built mm -hmm. It's supposed to be done by 2023. Right. And the only way I don't see being built is something out of their hands, like another pandemic oh. or a serious recession, yeah. you know, stuff that you just cannot foresee. Yeah. But if there's normal economy in the next three years, two years, I think there's 90% chance that it gets built. Interesting. So I think this is it. Kind of like with Resorts World, when Gentine came in, right. they're one of the biggest players in the, in the resort space. Yeah. They have the money, they have the know-how. They, they were able to plow through and get that thing done. So what I find interesting about Fountain Blue is there's more backstory to it. So apparently the original Fountain Blue purchaser, or the original person who had the idea of Fountain Blue, everything, the architecture, everything, the guy who's in co-ownership of it now is his son. And they're the billionaires, the billionaire brothers. Um, so there's a lot of money there. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, they can they, they they can withstand small bumps in the road, okay, or even big bumps in the road for that matter. Um, and then the sad story is the sad story about the Drew, uh, because what happened there? What the, the sad part is, the owner that was going to build the Drew, his son died of an overdose, and his name was Drew mm -hmm. or Andrew. I think okay. his name was Andrew, but Drew for short. So the hotel was going to be named after his son who died of an overdose. And so that's the sad part of of it being called the Drew. But I mean, it, it didn't fail because of that. That was just a, a side right. story of, of that part of the, that location there. Yeah. So then, but then it went under, I think, because of didn't have the money, whatever. I don't know the exact details. Yeah. And now JW Marriott's coming with the Koch brother and then, and then the original Fontaine Blue person. Yeah. So it's a good nucleus of three three people coming together. And I think the north end of the strip. I, I was just gonna get to that, yeah. I, I've been saying the north end of the strip 
is going to be the place to be within 15 to 20 years. Well, and that eyesore in that area right there is just needed. Once that's complete, it's well, going to open up so much. Well, more 2023 JW, JW Marriott Resorts World is done. Mm -hmm. Win West will be developed within 10 to 15 years. All Net Arena, if not in the next five years, like the current owner says, someone else will come in because the county only gave them until I think 2022 or three. Within two to three years, he's got to put a shovel in the ground else he loses his lease Everything. and he loses his permits and then the county would get someone else in there. So the all net, Win West and JW Marriott will all be done in 10 years. And then the convention center will either infill all the way to the strip with more convention space or they'll put a hotel in that parking lot. All, and that'll happen within 15, 20 years. So within 20 to 25 years, that's gonna be the latest, greatest area basically uh, and then you have the convention center so all the convention and business people will be hanging out the area and then the biggest question is what about the restaurant there which one the the, the classic from the 1950s the uh, oh uh, peppermint yeah peppermint yeah. what are they gonna do with that is that gonna stay there like a a classic one-story building with all these high rises built up against yeah. it uh, that's probably that's the most interesting aspect yeah, is that going to go actually. then tacos of gordo what are you going to do with that <laughs> i mean that, that's going to be an institution in 20 years do you rip out tacos of gordo too how many so, people are you going to piss off yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i i, I can see where pebble mill stays and tacos does it yeah but oh, still yeah. but el gordo is going to be a a state historic monument kind of place within another yeah. 10 years it'll so. probably be in one of the casinos there pretty soon that's yeah it. yeah so that, that's interesting about the north end. It's, it's going to fill in good, I think. Yeah, I, and that's why I asked about that section because once that thing gets complete, you're going to see a whole lot more. And hopefully, you know, the road works done, I mean, at some point. But you're going to see that whole site open up, which would, I think, definitely drive more business downtown area as well. So I don't know. I think it's a win-win for everybody um, hearing that they're getting – really serious into it this time and hopefully you know they can make it work because it'll be exciting to have another new casino opening plus palms you know yeah. there, there'll, there'll be a lot going on over the next uh, couple years so well how about how about this thought within 100 to 150 years maybe less about 100 within 100 years from now the center of the strip could be the strat because <laughs> we're talking fremont to mandalay bay yeah, that's crazy. Now, and yeah. and and between Fremont and the Str and the Strat will be more smaller boutique hotels. You won't have the massive yeah, right. ones going up because it's already well built. But I can see within a hundred years or so, roughly, give or take, from Fremont to Mandalay, it's complete resort corridor, yeah. and and then the Strat becomes the center. Interesting, yeah, interesting. <laughs> and then you have the big yeah, tower because everything's everything. growing out. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, so. interesting, dude. We've been chatting for thirty five what thirty five minutes already. Just yeah. yeah, that that that's that's what I enjoy. I enjoy this kind of stuff. Yeah, I really wanted to pick your brain on you know how you got into the vlogging people stuff of it because I've always enjoyed that. And so when we talked earlier and you're like, oh yeah, I started watching Trooper and since the beginning i'm like ah, that's one of the first people i started watching so you know when you mentioned jacob's life in vegas i mean those are the people that you know i've been watching trooper more than anybody else but yeah he was just one of those like just get out there and do it and he is a perfect example of just get out there and do it and i want to mention the person i forgot matt bridger who's coming here in next week three days yeah. january 11th so i wanted to oh, mention him I, th those are the three that I, that I follow, yeah. Bridger, Jacob, and Troop. You know what I love about Bridger is everything's raw with him. Everything's real well, with he's him. He's real yeah. and he, he just does his own thing. Yeah. He doesn't care about the latest vlogger fad. Uh, yeah. fad. Um, and that's I think a lot of people like him because he is genuine. Yes. I mean, he has a British accent and he's right. got that going. So that's, that's, a, that's a little icing on the cake. Yeah, yeah. But it's really being genuine and being himself. And the, you, you can feel and hear the love of Vegas through him. Oh, well, I was just going to say, you want to hear and feel something. How about when he hit the hand pail? <laughs> it's a fucking hand pail! I love it, dude. I oh. love it when he blows up. It's like my favorite. Yeah, I fucking love that. He's so great.
Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of fun, fun in all of this, man. But yes, I'm glad you stopped by before you're heading out because I did. I wanted to meet you, but not only that, I wanted to pick your brain and talk a little bit about this stuff because this is all in the realm of what I do, what we've been talking about, you know? So I definitely thought it'd be an interesting conversation, but mainly just to have you on to wish you luck because I can tell your hands are full. When you told me earlier, 175 notifications, I'm like, holy shit. Well, 175 vloggers that I follow. Right. I, one of these days, I'm going to count on how, how many notifications I get in a day. I don't know how many days. It's, it, may, it may not be that much, but there's about 175 that I get notifications on yeah. when, they, when they post. Nice. Well, again, man, keep up the good work. I look forward to more history stuff, history stuff. Guys, make sure you guys check out the Vegas Visual YouTube channel. channel. He won't tell you to subscribe. That's one thing about this guy's <laughs> channel I've learned. He's never gonna it's, tell anybody to subscribe. So I can say it, subscribe to his channel. It's that easy. If you wanna learn something about Vegas, this guy knows his stuff. And these are the kind of people I like sitting down with because they can tell you what was what before it was what, and you know, before it was even that. So that's what I find interesting. And again, it's been fun watching you become a part of this community because I've been, you know, I've been here, I've been, you know, watching everybody, but like you said, we bounce from you or from live streamer to live stream, and it's the funnest thing because what the greatest part is, so when we switch to a new stream, it's like, hey, hey, Vegas visual, hey, Vegas to Cali. It's like, we haven't seen each other all day, but we just got out of one stream and we're all starting all over again. Like we haven't seen each yeah. other. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Yeah. It's it's an awesome community though. I mean, look what they did for you know, um, Andy and Simone. I mean, look at you know the support. I mean, it's a community that, I mean, you want to talk about support Vegas to Cali, the Kinos. I mean, these people support everybody's channel and are promoting you know more than their own. And that's one thing I find interesting is just, it's real people that just love doing this coming out making fun videos to have something to go back to watch on. So your coverage of it just makes it that much more fun because somebody like myself who doesn't get to watch a lot of people, you find certain things in people's vlogs and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go watch this vlog and then next thing you know, I'm subscribing to them because you know it was worth it or they have, you know, uh, uh, they have an approach that you really enjoy or they're doing something different that somebody else is not. And you're like, how did I not find this person? So again, your hands are full, but I, I do want to tell you, brother, you're doing a hell of a job on your channel. Thank you. Thank I really, really enjoy it. And it's not about, you know, the subscriber count. It's not about nothing. It's the content that's quality. So, again, I'm glad you came over. I'm glad we were able to do this. And, again, man, anytime you're in Vegas, let's have a good time. I'm looking forward to, you know, <laughs> hopefully uh, sneaking up and meeting up with Bridger. I hope I can make that happen next that's week. That's Oh, man. are you going to come back for Bridger? I, I, I'm trying to. I got a couple yeah. interviews lined up for next week, too. I'm so thinking about like it. To, yeah. I'm just sad that it didn't line up the way it did. I'm, I'll miss him by three days, possibly. But oh, yeah. That's the way right. it is. I mean, yeah. It, it's hard, and especially for him. Like He was like trying to find a way to get here, and he's getting himself here. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see what that looks like, too, and maybe have him on in the future because he's been on before, but talk about, you know, what the, his whole experience was like. How was it different? Did it, you know, did it feel any weirder to you? Because we all know what it's like, but somebody who hasn't been here and been able to experience and, you know, has been away from it for so long, you know, he's just itching. And for somebody like him that really enjoys Vegas as much as we do, I don't think he's gonna, I don't think he's really gonna care. He's just gonna do his thing. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to him cutting loose because I know that's what he's gonna do. Oh yeah, I mean, that, that, that first day I could imagine. Um... And I haven't been able to watch, I, again, I, I only watched the Vegas vlog, so I watched his first vlog, Flying Your Barbados. Oh, yeah. Because that's kind of getting to Vegas, but then I haven't watched them since because they're Barbados-based. Okay. And so that's yeah. kind of my, and I got enough Vegas vloggers on a daily basis to <laughs> consume and coverage. So, um, and I also follow the, like, the Disney vloggers that come to Vegas. So I actually, oh, yeah. I actually subscribe to other vloggers yeah. that are travel vloggers or Disney vloggers so that when they come into town and do da daily vlogs, I, I cover yeah. them too. So I'm really Vegas <coughs> centric focused. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all about, um, about Vegas. Yeah. And then that sub count list at the end, those are only the, the Vegas vloggers. You have to be a Vegas vlogger to get on that list. Right. But just coverage, anybody who does a daily vlog. 
of any sort. How cool. Again, brother, keep up the great work. I appreciate the channel. I appreciate the history stuff. I'm always learning something with you and I'm excited to see what other stuff you got coming out in the future. Again, any other time you're in Vegas, let's link up because you, you, you're, you're, the, you're the community, man. You're the kind of people we like getting together with and just hanging out. And it's funny, I've never met you before this. Never ever met you. <laughs> and what's neat is, like we said, we've been, you know, chats and stuff together. Everybody feels like they know everybody and that's the camaraderie, that's the Vegas in us. So again, Thank you for spending some time with me, coming and chatting on the podcast and YouTube channel. Uh, again, it's much appreciated. The info dude is definitely, definitely worthy of just checking out his channel, guys. So definitely check out the Vegas Visual YouTube channel. Brother, until next time, cheers, my friend. Cheers. I got to give a huge shout out to all of our Patreon members and supporters here of the podcast and YouTube channel. Thank you, folks. You folks are awesome. And if you folks would like to get your name on this list, definitely check out our Patreon, where you guys can get your name shouted out on the podcast as well. And don't forget to check out our Zorkfest event. Tickets are already on sale. It's happening in December at the Plaza as well. And also be sure to make sure you're following us on social media so you can stay up to date with everything we have going on. And if you folks are new around here and just discovering our channel, definitely do me a favor. Type in new in the comments so I know who you are. And until the next video, folks, cheers.